sometimes I run into random CSS little tips and tricks that I think are really fun that I can't really find good ways to integrate into other tutorials. I came across three recently that I thought were kind of cool that I wanted to share and I just put them all into one quick video for you and that's that's why we're here so let's go and dive into it. Hello my friend and friends and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn all about how to embrace the cascade and fall in love with CSS and if not fall in love with it, at least be a little bit less frustrated by it and sometimes these little quick tips and tricks and other things can seem kind of weird and like why would I ever use this and then all of a sudden you just remember back to like wait I remember seeing this really random trick a while ago and I think that'd be perfect for what I need right now. So that's what I'm hoping to bring to you today. These are kind of random, kind of strange and quirky but each one of them I think are things that at one point could serve you well in the right moment so let's go and see what they are. Alright so you can see here all I have right now is this div class of box. I'm going to be playing around with this box for everything we're doing on this one. This is in CodePen so the link to the finished version of this will be down below if you want to play around with it uh, a little bit yourself. And so what we need to do for this is obviously select our box to be able to do anything with it and let's start by giving it a background. So background will be lime green because why not? And we need to give it some stuff so we can actually see it, right? Because if we put some content in here, it will appear. But uh, by default, elements have a height of zero. And I, I want a box. So we're going to make this a box. Uh, and also just really fast, it has this giant width on there. So let's come here and give this a width of, I don't know, we'll say 25 rem. And in the old days, what we used to have to do is um, if you wanted a perfect square or you know, I said box, I should have called it square because I want a perfect square. And in the old days, what we used to have to do is the weird padding trick that revolves around padding top and bottom as a percentage being based on widths and not heights. So, you know, you could do some interesting things with that. But what we can do now is an aspect ratio. And so this is trick number one. Now, I think more and more people are getting aware of this, but that just means that if I change this to 50, I will go 50 that way and an aspect ratio of 1 over 1 um, means that it's the same height and same width. I could do a 2 over 1 and then it's twice as long as it is high. Uh, so if you need a nice 16 by 9 aspect ratio on an embedded iframe, it's now super easy to do. Uh, the only one that currently doesn't have support for this out of the modern browsers is Safari and it is coming. It is in the technical preview and should be here once the next version rolls around. So there we go. I have my box like that. So there's trick number one is aspect ratio. And the next thing I want to do is get this in the middle of the screen. And there's better ways of doing it than what I'm going to do now. But this is one of those things that I just, when I found out about it and I accidentally found this out, I didn't know this is how things worked. And I think it was on a live stream <laughs> that I discovered this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here with a position of fixed. And what I didn't know about a position of fixed, and this is interesting, um, is if you give it a position fixed, and I'm going to do an inset of zero. So I, there's another new little bonus tip there, I guess, as well, is the inset of zero. So if we turn off my width and we turn these off here, um, the inset zero means top, bottom, left, and right. So it's a shorthand for all of them. So just to show you, if I did a, uh, I don't know, two rem there, it's going to go two rem off all the sides. And I do have a video that goes a bit more into detail on that. So if you want to check it out, you can. But we're going to do an inset of zero. But when you have things that are position fixed that have an inset of zero, it means they're using all that space. But you can still set a width on them. So it's going to limit the width to 25. But it sort of says, like, we have all this room to play with left and right. Um, and then also up and down. So th this doing position fixed with the inset, or if you're not using inset, the top, bottom, left, or right, is really important to pull this off. Because this is where the cool trick is, uh, you can do a margin of auto and it will go right in the middle. <laughs> um, so I didn't know this. I was playing around with um, something and discovered this accidentally a little bit. Um, so this is kind of cool. It's another way that you can center things on the screen. I wouldn't normally use a position fixed, but it's just, you know, there's a, a nice cool thing that I never knew about. Um, and it's basically margin top and bottom auto will work on something that has a position fixed on it. So, you know, we used to think, I always thought it was Flexbox and then Grid that enabled that top and bottom, but we always had it with the position fixed. We just don't use position fixed very often. Um, so, you know, I never had a, a reason to use that. And again, this is really important that we do have the inset on here. If you're not using the inset, its space that it's taking up is the size of the element itself. So by doing the inset zero or a top, bottom, left, right of zero, you're saying that it lives within this, this 25 rem box lives within the viewport basically. Um, and then the auto margins will work on there. So I thought that was really cool. I wanted to share that one with you. And then another one that came up and this was originally the, gonna be the whole video, but then I figured let's throw some extra bonus things at you along the way. 
Um, I'm writing background, but it's not background that I want to play with. It's a box shadow and box shadow. So this is a cool trick that you can use with box shadows. And so just really fast, I'm going to do something uh, 10 pixels and we'll do blue just so we see it. And so we see that. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Um, let's try not pixels, actually. Let's do three rem. Um, so it's a pretty big blur like that. Now, along with the blur, we also have this one here. And let's do a three rem on the spread. So that means it's going out three pick, or three rem before the blur starts. And this is a nice way to build in extra borders. And you might already know this. That's not what we're going to be looking at. Um, so you can see if I do that, you get like an extra border. And you can chain together different um, shadows to be able to get multiple borders like that, which is cool. But I'm actually going to leave this at zero. And if it's zero, you don't need a unit on it. But uh, we're going to play with that a little bit. So I'll leave the rims on here. The blur I don't need. Um, but if you come here and basically a shadow is behind something, it will not render in this space that's here. So even if the opacity on that was lowered, you wouldn't see it behind there. But right now the shadow is there, but we just can't see it. It's hiding. <laughs> um, but what we can actually do is let's go on this one, which is my vertical offset. And let's do a vertical offset of negative two rem. And watch this. We're going to get a border only on the top. Cool, right? And if we switch that to positive two, it'd be a border only on the bottom. And that's because we have uh, two rem here. So the shadow is there and we're moving it down. So you could come here and do a, a two here as well and move it diagonally across. So you sort of get that type of thing. And this I've done before. Uh, and I'd actually, I've used this before for certain effects and I never thought of doing it with a zero there and just giving myself a bottom border. So you could technically do this to get like a single border on one side. And we're gonna take this to one other step. Uh, so let's do a four rem here, zero, zero, and we'll do uh, blacks fine. Um, we'll do that one as red, then comma zero, six, zero, zero. Uh, we'll do purple, purple. And of course, if you have six here, you do need a unit. So there we go. Uh, and we start getting like this multiple border, but only on the bottom. Of course, you could do this left, right, top and bottom just by switching around where the offset's going to be. But we could also combine this now with things here. So um, with my spread. Now you could increase your spread if you wanted to, but you get some weird stuff that could happen here. But what you could actually do is let's do this as a negative one. This one as a negative two rem. And this one here is a negative three rem, three rem. And we sort of get this kind of thing going on. And yeah, I just thought that was kind of neat and fun to play with. And it's an interesting idea. So I could add more that could be going out the top. I could add more that would be going out the sides. So a few random CSS tricks there that might come in use every now and then. And if you like this video, I've put together a custom playlist for you right here uh, that goes into other fun little CSS tips and tricks and cool things you can do with CSS. And with that, a really big thank you to Zach and Randy, who are my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.